But then I want to ask you, how do we know when you say that Echad is a complex one, how do you know to stop at three? If it's complex one, you can have one times one times one times one times one. That is also equal to one. Why do you stop at three or four or five? If God is, is able to come down into this universe, which is great, uh, I don't think that people are questioning the ability of God here. We're just saying that this seems to be a logical impossibility because if you talk about the perfect God becoming an imperfect man and still being God at the same time, then he's perfect and imperfect at the same time. That seems to be a logical impossib impossibility. But the greater problem is, how do you know that you stop at three? There's no verse of the Bible which says that there are only three. There used to be a verse, 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, but the wording of that verse no longer says that there are three who bear record in heaven and these three are one. Now, in the end, in the Bibles that you're reading today, what gives anyone uh, the, the firm conclusion that there are only three divine persons? You can say only three have revealed themselves to us so far. But how do you know a fourth one isn't lurking in the shadows, ready to reveal himself? Or that as we speak now, in another planet in our galaxy, or in another planet in another galaxy, a divine person is now revealing himself. In fact, how do you know in human history that the Father did not uh, reveal himself as Krishna or Vishnu? Or, or one of the avatars of Hinduism? Or some other god or heroic person of, of old? or will reveal himself in the future, or another divine person. So by, by saying that Ikhad is complex and you can open it up, you can open it up, you're actually opening up a can of gods. <laughs> <laughs> and you said, why stop at three gods? That's an interesting question. Uh, I think it's because the Bible says three gods. Uh, this is a matter of revelation. Uh, I'm sorry, not three gods, but three persons in the Godhead. This is a matter of revelation. We look at what the scripture says, we listen to God and say, God, what do you tell us? Which is, by the way, exactly what Ashri does when he says, Bilakaif. Once again, Dr. Ali, I think we have to be consistent in our standards. If the vast majority of Muslims throughout history believe in the eternality of the Quran because of Bilakaif, are you condemning them as well as Christians when you ask for how these things can happen? Now, our complaint about the Trinity is that uh, you needed a word to say that there are three in one. Because there is no verse in the Bible which actually says that. I just heard Nabil saying that the Bible says three persons in the Godhead. And I wrote it down as soon as he said it because first he made a mistake and said three gods and then he corrected himself and said three persons in the Godhead. And he's saying that the Bible says this. But I will tell you folks, there is no place in the Bible where it says that there are three persons in the Godhead. This wording just does not occur. So Christians had to invent that very wording to say that there are three persons in one God. And then in addition to that, they invented the word Trinity. The problem is not so much with the word Trinity, it's the concept behind it that is the problem. That concept is not found actually in the Bible. That concept is a way of making sense of two things. One is that the Bible clearly says that there is only one God. Many times in the Old Testament, many times in the New Testament. That, that's the one fact. The other fact is that Christians began to worship Jesus. So now they found themselves with like, two gods. And they know they can't have two gods. So then they started to find a way to explain that this Jesus that they're worshiping is Yahweh himself, or somehow Yahweh. And so the idea of the Trinity came to be developed over time. It is a patchwork, joining two things which cannot really be joined. And the seams are always showing because as James White said in his book, The Forgotten Trinity, it is easy to fall into a heresy when you, when you think about the Trinity. If you think, as some Christians may say, that God is like we might be a father and a son and a husband at the same time, he said this is modalism, that's a heresy. So either you err on the side of modalism or you err on the side of tritheism, where you think of the God of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as being so distinct from each other that really they become three gods in, in your mind. So either you err this way or you err the other way. When it comes to thinking about Jesus, 
Christians are required to think that Jesus is fully God and fully man at the same time in such a way that everything he does is God, by God and man both doing it at the same time. So then we ask, okay, so he died on the cross. That means God died. Then a Christian thinks about it and says, no, God doesn't die. Now you're separating the two, which you're not supposed to do. So this is another heresy. And according to E.P. Sanders in his book, Paul, uh, Christians in practice almost have to uh, decide which heresy they're going to commit because it, it, you have to walk such a sharp edge you're going to fall on one side or, or the other. Why? Because this is a, an invented concept. Uh, it is true that in Islamic history people uh, discuss some mysteries about God. Yes, there was the Mehna, the Inquisition. Yes, uh, people quarrel over whether the Quran was created or not. But that is a quarrel that is not unique to Islam and that is not the same problem or, or a problem at the level of the Trinity. That's a problem that, that exists for Jews as well and also for Christians. So in addition to the Trinity, you still have this problem. We can ask you, okay, is, is the Old Testament created or not created? It is, it, is it not the uncreated Word of God? Nabil is suggesting, yeah, you Muslims should worship the Quran because that's the eternal Word of God. Okay, so the Torah is the eternal Word of God. Should Christians now worship the Torah? No. Uh, should Muslims worship the Quran? No. I think that's a very weak argument, uh, Nabil. You have to do better than that. Uh, Nabil is saying... Uh, I'm sorry, I don't mean that in a demeaning way, but it, it came out in, in the spirit of, of debate. I actually regret that I said it in, the, in that way. Nabil, forgive me for that. Uh, 